Hello and welcome to The M Word, where we have uncensored conversations on all things marketing. We're your hosts, Jennifer Mulchandani and Heather Michael Gard. For season two, our conversations are focused on brand. Listen in for ideas you can use for your brand. Enjoy today's episode. On this episode of The M Word, we go back through season two, which was all about brand. We're going to share some highlights with you and some of our favorite moments. Enjoy the show. Hi, Heather. Hi, Jennifer. I can't believe we're at the end of season two already. I know, that went really fast. It, it goes fast, um, except for the days it goes really slow, like when we find out we had yet another ad episode of bad audio. Oh, <laughs> that's the worst. Or we have to find another person to interview. And, and schedules and COVID and all the good stuff that went into it. But I think all in all, we did pretty well. And uh, we talked about brand. Yeah, we decided to pick one topic for the season and expand on it. And interestingly enough, every single person had a different definition of brand. Which is a good reminder, uh, being in the business that we are, that when someone walks through the door and says they need help with their brand, it might mean one of a million things. But uh, we know that words matter. And I think what we learned with brand is that um, at the heart of it, for each guest, even though they all approached these similar questions in very different ways is that each of them had something that um, was tied to like a motivation or a value or something that was not product or service related, but was about achieving something, which I thought was really kind of cool that that came through. And I felt like they all believed wholeheartedly in their definition of brand. They weren't like questioning, well, I think it's that no, they believed that their brand was this, whether it was visuals, messaging, values, and they accepted it and went all in with it, which was great. Yep. So let's review who we talked to and what we learned from them. Because if you missed any of our episodes, I mean, obviously they're all streaming and unavail- and available on our website, but um, I thought it'd be fun just to kind of go through who we talked to, which, so we talked to Diana from Pentagon MMA and you know, it, it was interesting that in the the pandemic, in a way, while really hard on her business, which is an in-person business, it forced them to retool technologically. And that had the resulting effect of their brand growing and them having reach now through a YouTube channel that they invested in that's literally worldwide. And their brand up until that point was really hyper-local focused. And so now the opportunities for their brand are are completely open-ended which is wonderful yeah it's kind of like ready or not here it is yeah. and they had to do it which was great all right so the next one was kim klingler with columbia pike partnership so they rebranded publicly this year um, and what stood out for me with them was they did a lot of internal work so they talked with consultants they talked to their board they did some community evaluation some focus groups and it was time Um, They had reached a point where Columbia Pike Revitalization Organization was no longer working for them. Yeah. And so they really, they walked in the door for a, the visual rebrand, having a really solid understanding of their mission, their vision, their values, their people. Like that was, that was totally, when that kind of work is done uh, from the client, the, the visual side is, it flows so easily. Yep, and we were actually there for the rebrand announcement, and it was so well received, and it was fun to to see the community get excited about yeah, that. Yeah, that was a fun party for sure. Uh, we talked to um, Kate Bates from the Chamber of Commerce, which you know Arlington Strategy has been a member there for almost ten years now, and you know she described how their brand already had evolved. They were operating with a whole different. Um, sort of purpose and um, infrastructure and that the their visual brands or the com- the outbound communication wasn't capturing who they really were authentically. And so for them, it was it was less about making a decision to change. They already had changed and they just needed a visual to make it happen. And they did theirs fast. She described a process that was m- only a few months in the making, but what made it work was that they had put their team together and they knew going in what it was going to take to come out and meet their own deadlines for their launch. 
Yep. And I think there is value sometimes in having that small committee of decision makers that can go in and get it done. Absolutely. Then we talked to Christine Wilson with M2M, um, and she has a digital marketing agency as well. And she really honed in on the importance of brand guidelines and aligning your team with who you are, what is your message, who's your audience, and just making sure that everything you put out there is in line with that brand guideline. Which is important because when you think about it, many of our guests talked about how the brand is passed along in the organization, you know, word of mouth or just training. But f- from her perspective, when you're, if you're going to grow your brand, that you're, you're by definition going to bring in people who weren't at the starting line and they don't have that history and that understanding. And so document, document and train. Um, otherwise, you know, you start having things change without you realizing it and unintentionally sort of thwarting what your whole brand goal was. We talked to Greg Hamilton from uh, Arlington Magazine, which has been in the community for a very long time now. And I think we were both struck by the fact that he he had a really good idea of what he wanted to accomplish. He wanted a lifestyle magazine. He wanted something that was representing Arlington Falls Church. Um, He in McLean and you know, but before he set out to do it, he went and he talked to his target market and. He, he, he tested his own assumptions, and he made sure that his target market um, made it clear what they wanted. And then when he launched the magazine and his new brand, um, he, he hit the nail on the head. He delivered what he said he was going to deliver and what, what was asked for. And so, and he's maintained that all the right. way through. Right. Yep. I was just going to say that. I think that he has stayed true to their values, to their original goals, mission, and it's proven to be successful. All right, and then we talked to Manny with CFO Services, and he was really inspiring to me. He put a lot of time, resources, money into this rebrand that they did, and it proved to be very successful. I think his his brand really, and his company skyrocketed after that. Yeah, I think he said his business doubled since the rebrand, but he also did share. It was a significant time investment, so... His role as CEO, he, he described as having shifted, um, and part of the, the rebrand included like operational infrastructure. What did they want to become, and what was it going to take to get them there, which I thought was fascinating. Another person we talked to who, who grew and then ultimately left um, and exited his, his first brand was Gavin Hammer, who now is running Story Prompt, but... We met him as the founder of Sendable, which is a social media um, planning tool. And so I think what was so interesting to me is he was talking about when he first building his brand, he felt this like driving desire to be bigger than he was. And he thought to be taken seriously um, as a software solution that he needed to pro- project this like largeness and pretended that he had a staff that was bigger than he was and you know using we language instead of I even when it was just him. But that as he grew and now that he's transitioned into another startup, um, the confidence that came with experience and he's happy to start brands and be, be involved with a brand that isn't big and mm-hmm. that's okay. Mm-hmm. That was a great episode. Then we talked to Navari with Intuitive. Uh, he actually had amazing sound quality because he was in the closet when we called him, and it was fun to uh, see him in there. Uh, made him a little bit more human, and he talked a lot about failure and how you need to fail to succeed. And that was a really great episode, just about vulnerability and taking chances. Yeah, and he he said that part of his brand essence is really connecting with people authentically, and that to do that, he, you know, not pretending to to be perfect, but um, share share points of vulnerability will actually make you um, relatable to people that who are trying to you know assess your brand and whether or not they want to work with you, which I thought was fascinating. We talked with Evelyn Powers. Um, 
from Design Powers. And I think that was the most we laughed on an episode. And she probably swore the most of any guest we've had in the two years we've done this, which kind of um, puts her up there in my in my bucket as uh, worth uh, talking about. So don't listen to the Evelyn Powers episode if you have um, uh, sensitive ears. We call those M bombs, by the way. Yes, and she was she was very funny, and uh, she also dropped a lot of names um, mm-hmm. because Evelyn's had her business in this area for quite some time. So that was a great episode about um, just being connected and. Um, and in knowing who you are, she's really evolved her brand a number of times and mm-hmm. shared mm-hmm. why and how she mm-hmm. she's gotten where she has over her 20 plus years in business. And yeah, she had no filter and I loved it. It was fun. That's right. Um, and someone close to, to Evelyn is Karen Bate with KB Concepts PR. Uh, Karen talked about uh, being your authentic self and walking the talk. Um, and finding that one thing and doing it well, you don't have to be all things to all people. Just find that one thing and make it the thing that you do the best at. You know, Karen's one of those people that um, really has a special place in my heart because I remember when I was very early in the business and met her and I was and she was launching her and Evelyn founded um, a networking group for business women in in the area. And at the time, I was like, oh, there's no way she's going to want another marketing person in the room. But instead, that her reaction was 100% opposite of what I was expecting it to be. And she's just one of those warm people who truly wants to help people succeed. Um, and it's been really fun to, to see her evolution of her own business um, and her own success. I agree. Then there was J.D. Spain Sr. He is a well-known name in this community and right now the president of the NAACP here in Arlington. I would just say he was real, honest, direct. He is so deliberate in what he says, in who he meets with, in his actions. And if he doesn't think something's right, he's going to speak up and tell you. And we felt like we could talk to him all day. Oh, yeah. I think we need to have multiple conversations because, you know, he's also a a, a businessman consultant in his own right. Um, And he does uh, he works for LMI and does, I believe, DEI work with them. But his passion around the work and and not just the work with the NAACP, but the work in the community in general and the other partners who are working. It's not just the NAACP, but the other partners who are doing great work around racial justice and um, and how the community, the ups and downs um, over the last few years and during a pandemic, how he's been at the helm, you know, gr- natural growth for the organization um, after the murder of George Floyd, but also, um, and and the community getting fired up, but then also the natural attrition that has happened, you know, and the more time has passed and how does, how do they as an organization maintain, maintain their presence in the community? So it was a great listen, highly recommend that. And related to, to that conversation, I felt it was it was a natural um, uh, evolution. Our conversation uh, with Whitney Kernodal, who is um, at the helm at Arlington Independent Media, and her, that conversation, I that she just came across as a person with power and purpose. Um, and she she'll admit that like she she comes as you know community organizing and she has been uh, an ad a community advocate um, and a, a background in law, um, but she wants to make a difference uh, in her community. She wants to give uh, voice to the to the unheard, and she has been retooling and rebuilding AIM, um, and they just had a big coming out party uh, for, for their their new their new launch. Um, and it, it was just, it was fascinating. She was so inspiring. I love talking to her, and I feel like she's someone that we could have more conversations with as well. Absolutely. Her, she, her story, she hearkens to, to her upbringing and her parents and the influence that they had on her creating a personal brand, and honestly, like her, her sense of self um, is directly correlated, I believe, to the power and uh, leadership she's bringing in her role with AIM and their rebrand and and, and regrowth, if you will, which has been fascinating. Mm-hmm. 
So we hope that those little um, snippets of our last episodes of season two will inspire you to go back and listen to them. They are all online. You can go to arlingtonstrategy.com and then listen wherever you download your podcasts. And Jennifer, we are starting now to plan season three of The M Word. I'm so glad that when I said, yes, we're doing this, you said, okay. (laughs) (laughs) And and didn't say no. No, I'm excited. Uh, But we've decided to to shift season three a bit. And we're not just going to pick one topic. Yeah, I I think our attempt with focusing on brand for season two was trying to bring in the conversations a little bit, um, try to go deep instead of broad. Um, But, you know, we had we had some wonderful nuggets of conversations before and after we hit record. And I think where our our uh, thrill was happening in these conversations is when we started talking about the stuff that wasn't so hot, meaning not the what went right in the rebrand or lessons learned or, you know, how to do it better next time. But it was the points of human vulnerability, which just it makes us want to meet people and talk to people. Right. Yeah. Our goal for season three is to throw out the script, so to speak, and talk to entrepreneurs, business owners, professionals about where did you fail and what did it feel like? And let's get vulnerable. We want to hear about the fuck ups and how you how you overcame them, even if like what happened next wasn't this great, like, you know, climb the mountain story, because I think that's the misconception here. And we've talked a lot, you know, Heather and I behind the scenes, it's so much of what we hear on podcasts and, and, you know, business success stories or marketing books, it's like how to get to the big win. But, you know, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you fail. Sometimes you fail again and you fail again. And there's there's things to learn from that, even if at the end of the, the episode it isn't. And then they sold their company for $20 million. <laughs> so, you know, we, we want to we want to get real. We want to get vulnerable. And honestly, I, it was that conversation with Navari. He's, you know, we keep saying he was in the closet. We meant literally physically. He was standing <laughs> between his clothes because and he, our our sound guy, Ben, said he had the best sound of anybody um, all season. Um, but he shared about getting vulnerable and as an important part of his brand, connecting with his customers to help them with their brand. Mm-hmm. Um and it just sparked that sort of that nugget for us of saying like, yeah, like let's have more non-scripted, open-ended, but let's let's get real. And it can't. Nobody has a like unvarnished story, and the yeah. varnish stuff's getting old. It is, and I feel like when you and I were messaging back and forth when we were talking to, to Navari and I think you wrote it to me in all caps let's talk about failure and I'm like yes that's perfect yeah and it, it lit us both up again and so I think it's a perfect way to seg- segue into season three um, but before we do we have another episode that we have some exciting news well it's uh, Arlington Strategies 10 year um, anniversary. And it's been fun talking about brand with uh, all of our guests all season because, you know, as part of my role in my own business is driving our brand and what is our brand and, and making sure we're true to it. So it's been inspiring and exciting for me as we get ready to, to put the flag in the ground on our 10 year anniversary. And, um, and perhaps, perhaps we're going to have some some new brand uh, to share with the community at that time. So um, it's been a lot of fun getting getting that ready concurrent with putting the season out. Fun. Well, so we would encourage our listeners go back and listen to season two if you haven't. If you have ideas for guests for us to interview for season three, someone, maybe it's you who's willing to get vulnerable and talk about failure and success and all that comes with it, we'd love to hear from you. And then stick around for our next episode where we are going to talk about Arlington Strategy and their 10 years of business and where they're going from here. Sounds fun. Thanks for listening in.
Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of The M Word. We'd love to hear from you. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. And we'd really love it if you would leave us a review. Until next time, don't be afraid to be uncensored. The M Word is an Arlington Strategy production hosted by Jennifer Mulchandani and Heather Michaelgard. Our theme music is Golden Reflections of the Sun by Vlad Glushenko. Graphic design by Kayla Fagan. Sound engineering and editing by Ben Mulchandani and Nina Sofia Pacheco. Editing by Nina Sofia Pacheco and Janelle Walters.